Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to you to think about the worst thing that you have ever done in your life. That one night, that one bad decision that you made. And now think about wearing a sign around your neck for the rest of your life that says, I made this bad decision. I smoked weed, I drank alcohol, I did this. Now you have to, what am I talking about? I'm talking about zero tolerance drug policies. I'm going to speak anecdotally about the United States because that is where these policies originated and that is where I'm most familiar with. And I think that this, the negative consequences apply to the rest of the places that have zero tolerance drug policies. So first I'm going to describe the history of zero tolerance drug policies in the United States. Then I'm going to give you three reasons why they're ineffective or counterproductive. The first is that it places poor minority youth in an undercast. The second is that it undermines democracy by effectively destroying checks and balances. And the third is that it's based on a drug-free myth and ultimately increases introduction rates. So first, what does zero tolerance mean? Zero tolerance means that the first time that you make a mistake, that is it. You go to jail, you get punished. Uh, what does good mean? I think in this sense it means effective at reducing crime, um, which I'll discuss later. Uh, fighting promotes the idea that this is a fight or something violent that requires uh, a, a violent response. And then crime, I'm going to qualify this and talk specifically about drug-related crime, uh, uh, although it applies to regular crime. So I'm going to argue today that no, it is not an effective policy for fighting zero, to uh, zero tolerance is not an effective policy for reducing crime or fighting crime. Uh, this is because it ruins lives and is ultimately counterproductive. So the history of zero tolerance drug policy in the United States, it emerged out of something called the Southern Strategy, which was a Republican policy to elicit support from uh, people in the South part of the United States after the Civil War who felt that uh, after the Civil Rights Movement that they were, their rights were being encroached on by um, uh, by uh, African Americans. And so zero tolerance policy was a way to uh, code this and make drug usage that was associated with this minority group um, a cause for immediate imprisonment. Um, through the Reagan years and the pre years of the resident George W. Bush, this policy was implemented in a variety of laws. It was inserted into many congressional bills as part of uh, financial aid, a caveat for uh, foreign aid, um, drug-free workplaces, these types of things. And this frames um, the poor as people, uh, the, this frames people that violate these zero tolerance laws as people that are not deserving of government help. These are people that, that because of this one mistake that they made, they should be punished. And so how does this harm society? Well, first of all, it disproportionately affects poor minority youths and marginalizes them for life in a permanent undercast. This is because it, um, it is attached to many different bills. And so the police disproportionately police uh, poor income neighborhoods. And so you, they get caught once. Uh, and so, and this is already on their permanent record. And so they become disqualified from things like financial aid, from federal financial aid for public universities, um, jobs that required drug testing. Uh, Drug-free workplaces were inserted into many bills requiring that you work, test your employees in order to get government funding. Um, this also happened with foreign aid. Um, and then they also have welfare testing. So if you want help from the government, if you are again a person that needs help and you are seen as a leech on society, once more you are punished by being drug tested and required that. So it only rich people can do drugs. Um, second, uh, I'd like to talk about framing. So this rule effectively destroys democracy because it circumvents the judges. Um, by doing, this is related to mandatory minimum sentencing. Zero tolerance means this is the policy that Congress has enacted, so therefore A happens and you do B. There's no room for interpretation by a judge, which is the basis of our common law system. And so it circumvents the two, judiciary, effectively destroying checks and balances, and it weakens our legal system. So it's, and it's very inflexible, very rigid, just like mandatory minimum sentencing, which there was a disparity between crack and powder cocaine, and um, there was obvious associated usage between different um, correlations between different income levels and the type of drug they used because one was cheaper than the other. And therefore, um, it uh, once again disproportionately hits minorities, but this also promotes disengagement because it just it is seen as unfair and um, it increases uh, mass. It, this also lead, led to the increases in the incarceration rates in the United States. Uh, and third, uh, it doesn't always, uh, it is based on a drug-free myth and ultimately introduces uh, introduction rates. 
Um, these laws were passed in a time in the United States where everything was drug-free this, drug-free that. That was the, the policy guy, the policy ethos of the Reagan and Bush administrations. And so things like elementary schools had these programs called DARE, DARE to be drug-free. These programs have been found to be ineffective at reducing uh, children's introduction rates into drugs. They um, actually increased introduction rates because children learned about drugs much earlier and therefore were more curious uh, about them. They were also um, increased consumption rates by making all drugs exactly the same. So if you're zero tolerance law, any drug is not tolerated. Therefore, you have marijuana, you have crack, whatever it is, there's no tolerance for it, you're going to be imprisoned. And therefore, it kind of weakens the credibility of the law because anecdotally, people know that they have friends that smoke marijuana that are, don't have their lives ruined overnight, and whereas crack is very bad. So it just doesn't make sense. Um, so fu fundamentally, it increases consumption by decreasing the legitimacy of the law, so people don't feel like they disengage from this law, and they don't feel like following this law. Um, and the drug-free myth is, uh, the drug-free myth basically is the idea that drug-free society can exist, and this has no precedent in history ever. Um, the United States uh, had high drug consumption rates in the 60s, but they're actually lower now than they were then. And even though, even this program was ineffective at reducing them, the lowest point of drug consumption rates in the United States was in 1992. And therefore, and it has been increasing ever since, despite the, pr the continued existence of programs like DARE and uh, programs that promote zero tolerance laws. Um, even President Obama Obama recently reduced the disparity between crack cocaine and powder cocaine sentencing because he understood the disproportionate effect that this was having on minorities and admitted that it was fundamentally flawed. So I'd like to conclude. Everyone makes mistakes. It's a fundamental part of being human. That's why we constantly change and evolve as a society. Uh, zero tolerance laws are inflexible, ruining the lives of the poor minority youths that are disproportionately affected by these particular laws. They are reduced, their chance of going to college and becoming a productive member of society are completely eliminated. They won't get jobs, they won't get welfare, they have no resources at the, be the beginning of their lives. They're disproportionately punished for something that they committed in their youth. And this can't continue. And therefore, they aren't, in effect, they aren't effective because they disengage from the government. They stop voting, they stop, the democracy is undermined. Um, eliminating checks and balances and delegitimizing itself through a one-size-fits-all approach, and therefore, we should have no tolerance for zero tolerance. Thank you.